And so are you going to take a ride with me so we can... No. No? So you can do what? Well, I don't know. Okay. Yeah, you drove the baler. That's no big deal. You just go, you just go down that, follow that line, and slow down when you turn. You're the old, old hand at this. Well, thank you, Uncle Chris. I'm officially rolling by myself. This is super exciting. I cannot believe it. And I can't believe Uncle Chris trusted me on the first after just one lap of lessons. Hello, welcome to Kate's Egg. Right now is my first pass in the roller by myself. Uncle Chris only gave me one lesson. It's insane. But I'm very excited and I think I'll be able to do it because I did drive a tractor basically the same as this for bailing. I feel pretty comfortable with it so that's good. When I roll I'm doing half of the pass I already rolled and then when I come back I'll do half of this pass. So I make sure to double roll everything because our roller isn't really heavy enough to fully push the rocks in the ground like the rollers that fill up with water. So we like to go over them two times, as my Uncle Chris said. It's super fun for me to be able to roll. Now the tractor does not have GPS guidance like the drills, so I do have to hand drive it, which I don't know that I'm driving in the straightest of lines, but I'm trying my best. I'm only rolling at about 10 miles an hour because when you roll at a slower speed, it's easier on all of the equipment. And also, I don't want to catch Darcy, who's in the drill, because you roll at all the fields after the drill has gone by to push the rocks down so that when you go to harvest them, especially pulse crops, we roll all of our pulse crop fields because when you go to harvest them, they don't grow very tall and you have to basically put your cutter bar of your combine right on the ground. And rocks can wreck a lot of the equipment. And when you roll the fields, the rocks get pushed into the ground. So this field is being seeded to chickpeas. Some people also roll their barley fields. We usually only roll our pulse crop fields. So now I'm rolling to the end here where Darcy's seated. Slow down and turn. Although you are able to hit the hitch on the tire just like in seating. So I have to be very careful with that. Um, I do feel pretty comfortable with the turns because I have done quite a bit of this in the drill. And that's really the only bad thing you can do in this, I would say. And I'll probably go up to about 8 to 10 miles an hour. Darcy's right over here. So it's pretty cool to be in the same field as Darcy again. I always love that. Sometimes it's sort of challenging to tell where you've last rolled. But I think I have it figured out. I love driving this type of tractor. I would say this is one of my very favorites. You control the speed with this little knob right here by moving your thumb forward or backward. And you can have your rabbit gear, which is your fast one, or your slower one, which is your snail speed. Actually, on most of the tractors, it's turtle speed. But on this one, it's really interesting because it has snail rather than turtle. And I learned all of this bailing, so definitely go and check out my bailing videos. This tractor can go like 0.2 miles an hour, which is insanely crazy to me. So you really never even have to stop it. It also has a clutch, but you, you don't need to use it. Although my family recommends that I do so that I'm used to using the clutch for our equipment that does require it. I think this has already been rolled so I'm gonna come out a little bit here because you also have to take into account rolling the field double costs extra in fuel so you don't want to be rolling it triple you want to just make sure you're doing a good job because we do not have the proper headers to cut a field like this we usually hire custom cutters because a lot of different crops require different headers so chickpeas require something called a flex header which basically lays flat on the ground and molds to the ground so that you're able to pick up all of your crop. Whereas wheat and barley just require traditional straight cutting headers or we also have pickup headers for if we swath our wheat. It's looking like we're going to have a really terrible harvest this year. So I'm being optimistic about it and hoping we get some rain. 
Um, but we did have a drought last year as well. So farmers have to prepare for those bad years by saving on the good years and not purchasing new equipment or buying tons of land because you have to be able to, if you own your land outright, that's ideal. But you also, if you don't, you have to make your payments to your land. You have to make payments to your equipment. So we like to try and own our equipment outright um, and our land. The last tractor that was pulling the roller had two flat tires. It was super old. So I'm very fortunate to be driving this tractor for my first rolling experience. It looks like this part had been rolled before and then it just ended, so I'm not sure what happened there. Oh, maybe that was when we turned around with the roller. I'm lining the left side of my loader up with the line that I've rolled because that's about half my roller so that I'm able to double roll the field. Actually, my line's over here. So I'll have to turn around here pretty soon. So I'm slowing down. It's kind of bumpy driving in the field at eight miles an hour because when you go seeding, you're really maximum driving five miles an hour. I believe I'm on my line now. So now I'm on my second pass of the day, of my first day in the roller, actually. It looks like Darcy's drill is stopped, so I'm wondering if he's either out of fertilizer or seed. Pretty sure this has been rolled here. Uncle Chris is coming back out to the field as well, driving about nine miles an hour. So I've only got a few more passes and I'll probably be catching up to Darcy which will be super sad because I love rolling and I love driving this tractor. It's so luxurious compared to our other tractors and it's just really exciting. I would say my favorite type of field work is either combining or seeding. Combining is pretty awesome and it's really incredible to see all the hard work you put into your crop year round and finally see the fruits of that labor. But seeding is the most crucial element, one could argue, because if you don't put a crop in the ground, you won't have a crop to harvest. And if you don't put the crop in the ground properly, you also won't have a crop to harvest. So I really love seeding as well. And there's so many more technical aspects that go into seeding. For example, the amount of fertilizer you put on with your seed, the placement of that fertilizer, different drills can do different things, the timing when you start seeding, I find it to be a lot more of a technical area of farming rather than harvesting. When your crops are dry enough, you harvest them with the proper equipment and you put them in the bin. Whereas if you don't get seeding right, then you won't have as good of a crop to harvest. And then also the planting stage during the winter, deciding what fields you're going to plant which crops in. Just made my turn here. I'm gonna try and figure out where I roll that. For example, if you have no moisture in the top couple inches of your soil, but a lot more deeper down, then you want to plant a crop that will have a root system that will go deeper to get the moisture out of the soil. And then if your soil is deficient in something, you want to make sure to plant a crop that could potentially replenish the soil of that deficiency. So it's just a fascinating subject, really, and it completely has to do with soil science and agronomy and once you find out the perfect combination of plant soil fertilizer that's when you have a really fantastic crop and and that's why harvest is so awesome because it's the rewarding part i'm going about eight let's see 9.2 miles an hour and it not only shows me here it also shows me on my dashboard as well. It doesn't look like I'm driving in a very good straight line, I can tell you that much. I don't know how well I would have done in the olden days where you had to do all your seating by being able to drive in a straight line. Although I think you probably get pretty good at it. You know, I kind of get sidetracked and see, oh, there's a bunny running in the field, let me watch that, and then my tractor zigzags. So I think it's important to recognize that fault in yourself and and not do that when you're doing an important job like seeding. Rolling, you can kind of miss some things. You don't want to miss anything, of course. 
um, but it's it's not like seeding. The clouds are starting to look like it's raining maybe in some areas. They were really big and fluffy this morning. I don't know, hopefully we do get some rain. We really need it. And this whole panel swivels, so if I need to look at the back here, I can drive the tractor with this hand and look outside to make sure my roller is still attached and doing its job. The roller will bend a little bit like this through coolies and different things, and it's really hard to break, so I don't have to be as careful with it as some other machinery that we have on the farm. It looks like Darcy's still so stocked, so they're probably filling. Now I have to take the tractor out this way a little bit because I've already rolled this bit, and that's why my line of direction looks like this. Sometimes you just want to straighten it out and try and drive in a straight line. So you just kind of watch the end of the field, and it's just like learning how to drive a car. Your instructor will tell you to look far down the road so that you're not doing all these little adjustments and you can see kind of your ending point. And that's the same thing as that you do in the tractor. Although I learned how to drive a tractor before I learned how to drive a car. So that's kind of an interesting order of events. I really enjoy being out in the field because it just it makes me happy to see the beautiful sky and also to think that I'm doing tractor work in a field that my great grandfather homesteaded and once seeded with horses, harvested in traditional methods. Me now being the fourth generation, it's truly incredible to have that level of history with the ground that you're working and that your family's been doing it for over a hundred years. Our farm was homesteaded in 1912, so 2012 would have been our hundred year mark. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe to learn a little bit more about how your food gets to your table. You can also follow Kate Sag on Instagram, K-A-T-E-S underscore A-G, and on TikTok, Pinterest, and Facebook. And if you'd like to, you can go to the Kate Sag website to purchase a Kate Sag tote bag, which I have right here. They're 100% made in the USA, and this is a blue wheat design of a photo of wheat taken at our farm during harvest time. Thank you again for watching. Bye!